This is rental car number 83, and today I'm driving the 2018 Chevy Impala Premier. Now, Premier is the top trim level on the Impala, so this one's a bit more expensive. It comes in at about $37,000. So I drove and reviewed the LT trim level a couple of months ago. I really loved it, so I was pretty excited to get behind the wheel of the Premier model. There is so much to talk about, so let's jump in right away. First, by popping the hood and taking a look at what's underneath. All right, so let's talk specs for a second. First off, this is front wheel drive. You get a six speed automatic transmission, 3.6 liter V6 engine that kicks out an impressive 305 horsepower. You can go zero to 60 in this little four door sedan in 6.8 seconds. And with all that power, you get some decent fuel economy. 19 in the city, 28 on the highway, on an 18.5 gallon fuel tank. Not bad. All right, so that's a bunch of numbers. What does it really mean in the real world? Well, I haven't driven this car for probably two weeks. I got a little busy and didn't post the video right away. Despite that, I can still remember driving down the highway, throwing this thing in at cruise about 70, 75 miles an hour, and just feeling like the car was eating up the road in front of me. I mean, it really is a pleasure to drive. It's quiet. It just sort of purrs at you all the way up to 80 miles an hour. It really is that good. Plus 305 horsepower is no joke. You're going to have no problem keeping up with traffic in this four-door bull-sized sedan. All right, but enough of me gushing about performance. Let's uh, jump inside and take a look at what kind of amenities you can enjoy in the Impala. So first off, if you didn't notice, you do get keyless entry. That means you get a key fob. It's a nice size, um, good shape. Chevy's logo on the back, five buttons on the front with a flip out key. My only concern here is the lock and the unlock button look awfully similar. So it does take a little bit of getting used to so you know which button to press just by habit. You also get a keyless start feature. It's this circular button located right here on the dash to the right of the steering wheel. And the steering wheel setup is pretty comfortable. Here on the left hand side you get your cruise controls. Then on the right hand side you get buttons to interact with your phone and also with the menus in the small display in the gauge cluster. Around the back you get volume rockers. I actually like these quite a bit and I reach for them even when I'm not in a Chevy. And then above the steering wheel is your gauge cluster. Uh, I don't know about you but I like this setup. I like having big dials for RPMs and speed and then I like how large this display is in the center really is bright and crisp. You can see it in day and nighttime hours, and it's full of information, full of menus for you to cycle through to see all kinds of information about the vehicle. And to the left of the steering wheel, I mean, here's where you get all your standard buttons, right? Window controls, door locks, mirror controls, and then up here on the dash, you have a couple more controls. This is the electronic parking brake. You also get the release for the trunk, and then you can turn on and off park assist, all right here. And then below there, I'm never really impressed with this, but you do get a very small storage area right here uh, to keep some odds and ends. And then to the right of the steering wheel is where things start to get a little interesting. This is your eight inch touchscreen. I like this one a lot because it has big colorful icons that make it really easy to navigate through all the menu structures. Uh, super simple to connect your phone via Bluetooth. It took me a matter of seconds. And then you get another nice feature. That's if you press this special button right here, the screen itself will actually lift up and reveal a storage area with a hidden USB port. It's quite a bit of fun to play with. I also want to point out that below the touchscreen, there are dedicated buttons to help you quickly jump to all the important features up there. And then below there are the climate controls. I actually love these. I like that there are big dials to adjust the temperature. I like that there are actually digital readouts to tell you exactly what temperature you set and that there's big, easy to reach buttons for everything else. I mean, this worked great. I was able to set the car at a comfortable temperature within a matter of moments. It's really easy to use. And then below there, uh, behind the gear shift, you do get a storage area right here. I found this perfect to uh, store my cell phone, and I think that's what they intended because it's got a wireless charging pad right here. Now, my phone's not set up to do this, but I'm sure it works great. And this is a pretty convenient area to keep something like this. Uh, I was pretty impressed. And then behind there you get a gear shift. Uh, works great, looks nice, no complaints here. 
two nice size cup holders, and then something I found a little bit more interesting, you get your heated seat controls right here. Behind there, there's this nice little cutout that I found perfect to uh, store my cell phone. Then you have a center armrest with some storage underneath. It's got a uh, removable shelf, perfect for change. And then a nice sort of storage area below there. Nothing special down here, no ports or anything like that, but it is a, a pretty decent size. And same kind of vibe for the glove box. It's a big storage area, really useful, but nothing special. No ports in here, no extra shelving, nothing like that. Then shifting your gaze way up top to the ceiling, I uh, get a bunch of controls up here. That one, two, three, that's your garage door opener settings. You get two large lights to illuminate the cabin. Uh, OnStar and a panic button up here. And then a standard rear view mirror with uh, no buttons or anything distracting on it. This is exactly the way I like it. And then since we're talking about mirrors, the side view mirrors are a good size and they do come with blind side detection. That's this little icon right here. It will illuminate if there's a car in your blind spot, or it will blink at you if there's a car in your blind spot and you turn on the turn signal. Super helpful. Uh, I enjoy having this on a car quite a bit. All right, so that's all the highlights of the front seat. Let's uh, jump in the back seat and see what kind of experience your passengers are going to get. So first off, legroom is great back here. I'm six feet tall. I got that driver's seat pushed back a good distance and I still have about eight inches of legroom, which I think is fantastic. Another great feature is the car seat anchors. They are super shallow. I don't know if you have kids, I do. Connecting car seats can be a huge pain in the butt. Thankfully, it'll be easy on the Impala because these things are real easy to reach. Back here, there's also a fold, foldable, foldable? How about we say fold downable? armrest with two cup holders. There's also dedicated vents for your passengers on the back of the center armrest for the front seat. And then back here you also get a three-pronged power port, meaning you can just plug in anything you got back here without needing an adapter or a USB port. And then all the way at the bottom there is uh, another power port down here in the form of a cigarette lighter, so you will need an adapter for that one. All right, so that's everything in the back seat. Not a huge list, but pretty good for a $30,000 sedan. Let's close things out by looking all the way in the back of the vehicle at the trunk space to see what you get back there. So here it is, good and big space. The wheel wells don't infringe on the area too much. You get some cargo netting to hold things in. And then underneath the floor, if you lift up this uh, styrofoam feeling thing, it reveals a small area where you can store some tools. So all in all, not super exciting, but I think very, very functional. All right, so that's pretty much all the highlights of the Chevy Impala, at least the ones I found interesting. I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed that I'm hearing rumors that Chevy is considering uh, discontinuing the Impala. Word is that the 2019 model is probably gonna be the last one. I guess we'll see. I mean, you never know. Maybe Chevy will change its mind. But for now, what you should be asking is, uh, would I recommend this vehicle to you? Yes or no? And the answer is yes. Look, I know you're shocked, especially since I've been gushing about this car pretty much the entire review. Um, I just really like this one. I know it's probably not the sexiest car out there. I know there's plenty other vehicles with uh, more up-to-date tech or maybe more exciting features. But all in all, the Chevy Impala is really a pleasure to drive. So if you get a chance, I highly, highly recommend you take this one out for a spin. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time when I rent my 84th rental car. That will be the 2017 Infiniti Q50. I'll see you then.